Hey friends, it's Natalia and welcome back to She Makes 31. I'm so excited to share today's video with you. It's an ultimate front porch makeover. Watch as this porch gets transformed with simple steps and touches that make a dramatic difference. The first thing I started to work on was this DIY patio umbrella stand. It does require some quick creeps, so I did this the day before I started. It's very simple. You use this bag of concrete that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. And I also got some PVC pipe. It was an inch and a half um, wide PVC pipe. It's already pre-cut from the store. Um, so we added this concrete to this five gallon bucket and you add about two gallons of water. It's really simple because you don't have to mix the concrete or anything. You just pour the water in and you let it seep through. We also made sure that the PVC pipe was centered and this will be the base for the umbrella. I also got these screw eyes on the eaves of our house. We have these um, cute little spaces where you can hang plants from and I know that adding greenery and flowers it just brings joy to me and it makes this space so pretty the hanging plants that I got were from Walmart I didn't love what they used as the hanger to hang them off of so I got these replacement um, chain and hooks from Walmart as well and went ahead and cut off the plastic one and added the metal uh, black metal chain one. If this is your first time stopping by, I just wanted to say thank you and welcome. My name is Natalia and I am a wife and mom to three boys. We live in South Florida and I love making videos like this. I love to transform spaces with very simple things. It doesn't have to be complicated to make a big difference. Um, so make sure that if you like watching videos like this that you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when I post new videos. I got this geranium on clearance at Walmart and I just saw the potential it had. I wanted to rehabilitate it. Um, so I went ahead and gave it some plant food, took care of it, and guys, it came back. So I will show you at the end how it just bloomed beautifully. I use this miracle Grow a rose and bloom plant food um, to feed these plants. I know I should have done it before I hung them up, but oh well, I'm tall enough that I can reach. <laughs> but I went ahead and put some of this in and I gave it a really good watering. At first I did some water and then I decided to do a whole lot more, just enough to see the water pouring out from the bottom hole. Um, I just wanted to kind of drench it and make sure that it got all those nutrients. Now this hanging basket is a geranium with a mix of trailing red. I love this trailing red. Um, it actually has grown quite a lot since I filmed this. Um, these plants, by the way, take full sun. So it's just beautiful the way that it blooms. All right, so next I'm clearing off the floors because I'm preparing to pressure wash. Um, this area here collects a lot of dirt, um, a lot of rainfalls on here, and the roof had recently been changed. So a lot of the um, like gravel and things like that from the roof were kind of falling off um, onto the floor and just kind of sticking there. Um, there's some uh, tile here and it had been peeling. So I wanted to go ahead and give everything a really good wash. And then after that, I was gonna go ahead and start painting. I use this crud cutter house wash and guys, it's amazing. It, it just cleans so well. Um, and then I got this Sun Joe pressure cleaner 
from um, Walmart and guys I love it I've never actually used a pressure washer this was my first time and it was so easy to use um, it comes with different nozzles um, depending on kind of like what um, pressure you want I went ahead and let the soap soak in for about 10 minutes just to get all the you know dirt and all that just make it easier um, so after you let it sit then you go ahead and use the nozzle that you want it took me uh, you know a few tries to figure out like the distance that I had to use between the wall and the nozzle um, because if you got too close you could peel off paint potentially so um, it's just a little trial and error but I just loved using this it made such a dramatic difference in the house Guys, this is so satisfying to do when you just see like the crud coming off of the walls and everything. It just, oh man, it's very satisfying. <laughs> but um, I went ahead and just, yeah, you'll see here how I went a little too um, close with the pressure um, where it actually peeled a little bit of the paint off, but it's okay because I actually retouched that um, paint anyway but I just wanted to let you guys know in case you know you end up getting a pressure washer that you just got to test it out make sure you don't get too too close Make sure you check out my Instagram. My handle is at SheMakes31. I like to post video updates there and just family updates and fun pictures of the kids. Now for the patio floors, we got this turbo nozzle at Walmart and um, got this because it's a lot stronger it actually increases the PSI um, on your pressure cleaner and I wanted to be able to get as much paint as I could off of these floors um, this worked really great especially for the grout um, and I just again wanted to get as much of it off as I could before I went ahead and primed the floor For these floors, because they were previously painted, I wanted to make sure that I had a good primer on there. I got this primer called Styx at my local Ace Hardware, and it works really well, especially for like these outdoor floors that are gonna get water on them. Um, it's holding up really, really well. I used a three inch angled paintbrush to cut in and also for the grout lines it seemed like it was a little bit harder for the roller to get into the grout lines so I used the brush for that and it worked out great. Once I realized that the roller was not getting into the grout as well, um, I went ahead and started using the paintbrush and I didn't want to let the paint dry um, and leave streak marks behind. So I went ahead and did it section by section. So um, did the grout with the paintbrush and filled it in right away pretty much with the roller right after.
so once the primer was dry I went ahead and did my top coat I got this tough top Duraplate 289 paint from Benjamin Moore and this tread text it's an anti-skid paint additive um, to mix into the paint so I used this two gallon bucket to pour my paint and then I ended up using the entire contents of the anti-skid additive for the one gallon um, I just added it little by little mixed it in really well it's kind of like a sand it just makes sure that your floors don't get slippery when wet again I mentioned that these floors um, constantly get rained on and stuff so I wanted to make sure that it was safe for us to walk on I use this particular paint, the Tuck Top Dura Plate, because it's one that can also be used on your driveway. Um, we originally planned to use this same exact paint for our driveway, and I wanted to make sure that the um, color would match. I didn't want to use regular floor uh, and porch paint and then not have it match the driveway. So um, this works for both, so I went ahead and used it um, because it can be used for both. So while the floor was drying, I went ahead and decided we were going to paint our front door. Um, this is a rental, so I had no control really over the um, peachy color that's on the outside. It's not my favorite. I did not like it, but I tried to find a color that would work well with it and the um, floors. So I went ahead and started by priming this door. This is a brand new door that was replaced. Um, by the owners and so they gave me the green light to go ahead and paint it um, so I went ahead and used um, this spray paint it's a wonderful like it has a great big nozzle and it's a really large can and it just gives it a nice effect like a paint sprayer would for the top coat I use this bare premium plus exterior semi-gloss enamel in a Sherwin-Williams colors called denim um, and this flow trawl flood um, it helps with eliminating brush or roller marks and just leveling your paint when you're using a paint sprayer um, and if you didn't know you could always ask for um, even if you're not at Sherwin-Williams Home Depot does have a um, record or a database that has all the formulas for their competitors and so I was just able to tell them that it was Sherwin-Williams denim and they were able to color match it that way. We also went ahead and painted the walkway that leads to the house in the same color that the porch was in and for this I ended up having to use a thicker nap roller. This is concrete so it's very porous and it's a rough texture. I did have a um, roller that was for like semi rough surfaces but I found that the one that was for really rough surfaces worked best. For the walkway, I did not use a primer because this DuraPlate um, paint can go over existing paint. Um, the only reason why I chose the primer was because it was ceramic tile in that um, other portion that I was painting and that's known to be like slick and just not hold paint as well so the primer was very important then. So guys, I feel like paint is such a powerful tool whenever you're making over a space 
there is the power of paint it can transform a room so much an area so much just by paint like I ended up doing the front door and these floors and it changed the complete look of the house it just transformed it and here don't don't uh, mind me but I decided to change the color that I first painted um, it did work but I like this darker color I feel like it made a better contrast it's called Bear Creek and it's a Benjamin Moore color um, so I went ahead and instead of using um, two coats of that first one I ended up using the Bear Creek color as my second coat um, and it worked really really well it covered fantastically and I just feel like this color was definitely more what I was looking for And I didn't film it, but I did do a light um, touch up on that peach color paint. I was able to get that color matched off of one of the pieces that was peeling off and went ahead and added a coat of that to just kind of make it look much more cleaner. In my next video, I'm going to be posting an ultimate front yard landscaping makeover. Make sure that you check it out. Um, there's a little sneak peek of some of the sod that we laid out. Now we're moving back to the DIY patio umbrella stand. The concrete has dried. I took out any excess water that was on top and then I went ahead with my drill bit and made holes on the five gallon bucket to create some kind of drainage so that when it rains and stuff the water just won't accumulate. For our front porch, we purchased a patio umbrella. It was a half umbrella. You'll see what I'm talking about in a little while, but it was brown, so I wanted to make sure that the PVC pipe blended in. I also got this plant tray at Lowe's that um, was the same measurement as the top of my planter that I got at Walmart. So this plant tray or saucer um, is actually going to be used as the top of the umbrella stand. It is going to be like a little tabletop where you can put your drink or a plant or whatever you want to lay on top of the um, stand. So in order to get it through, we made sure that we drilled um, a one and a half inch hole that would fit the PVC pipe and uh, use this drill bit to make this circle. Um, and this little saw that we had if you have you know a jigsaw that would probably be best but we had what we you know had so we worked with what we had is what I'm trying to say and after that um, we used some sandpaper to sand off the rough edges We went ahead and placed the saucer on top and then put in our umbrella and this is a half umbrella which is means it's a semicircle instead of a full circle which worked out perfectly here for this front porch area. And to finish off, we added some decorative touches. I got this wreath, it's a plain green wreath from Kirkland's that I can use year round. And this indoor outdoor rug is going to be the bottom layer um, rug that I'm using for my entryway here. It's from Target. And the top layer rug is one that I got at Walmart and it says hello and I love it. It's just cute, simple and after that, we just went ahead and staged the front. We were so tired by now, um, but we put in our rockers that we got at Walmart last year and added our pillows. 
and yes my husband has learned the karate chop <laughs> he sees me do that to all the pillows but usually they're feather stuffed pillows but i won't say anything this time <laughs> so um we're gonna go ahead and stage this um, i got this little plant here for mother's day from noah so i thought it was perfect because it's in the shade which is where it needs to be all right so here's a little reminder of what it looked like before and this is the after Here's my geranium she is a bloomin and she actually got even more blooms after I filmed this this is such a great spot to just sit back and relax have a drink we just love hanging out here and rocking on our chairs and watching the kids play. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.